Our video about PEX A versus PEX B hit 100,000 views last week, and in the comments section of that video, I got a lot of questions about PEX C. So I didn't really cover PEX C in that video because it's a lot less popular than PEX A and B. So I'm going to go into what PEX C is in this video. Maybe after that, you'll understand why it's less popular. I'm also going to go over uh, this company that is incurring a huge lawsuit as of last year for a certain type of PEX C that they sold, and there's a whole story behind that, and I'll go into that later. There's a common misconception about the names PEX A, B, and C because often people think that those indicate some sort of grading system, but it really doesn't have anything to do with that, and PEX A, B, and C just come from the manufacturing process, so that's where they get their names. But there are uh, differences between PEX tubing and how they perform. So PEX C is manufactured using a process called electronic iridation, and it's also known as cold cross-linking, and since it's made with a different process, this uh, bond that's created with PEX-C is weaker than PEX-A and B. So that's what you really need to know about PEX-C, is that the manufacturing process uh, results in the PEX having a less uniform cross-link than A or B, and this means that it's more susceptible to kinks, which really ruin your PEX because the only way to fix that is with a coupling. So if you check out this chart, you'll see a more um, informative breakdown of PEX-A versus PEX-C and uh, B. So you can pause the screen now to check out this chart that compares PEX A, B, and C. So whether it's PEX A, B, or C, all products must meet and be certified by the same American and international standards. And I should also just add that if you have a PEX or copper system and there's a problem with it, it's usually due to human error and it has uh, less to do with the product itself, except for in the case of Nibco, which is the company I mentioned before. So as of October of last year, the company called Nibco settled in a lawsuit for $43 million due to a specific type of PEX-C that they sold. And what happened with the PEX-C was that over 10 years, it started to split because of degradation from chlorinated water. So this specific PEX-C was called Durapex and it was produced until 2012. So the thing is that Nibco wasn't the original producer of Durapex and they actually purchased the company called CPI that produced Durapex. So when they purchased the company, they assumed all the liability of the assets sold under that company. So they got the problem of the, the PEX that bursts. So I guess long story short, when Durapex started bursting, uh, it was considered an asset of Nibco, so they incurred all of the fallout that followed. Now all homes with this type of PEX must be repiped. Fortunately, CPI was not a worldwide distributor, so the main targets of bad PEX were homes built between 1998 and 2006. These homes were built in Union County, North Carolina, Lancaster County, South Carolina, and York County, South Carolina. If you want to see if your home is affected by the Durapex, you can follow this link in the description below. So like I said before, if there's a problem with your PEX or copper install, it's usually due to human error and it's not the product. But like in the example above that I just gave, there are some known issues with products. But if you take PEX B as an example of liability, it's been around for over 40 years and there's no known issues and it comes with a 20 to 25 year warranty. So it's probably why PEX B is the most popular type of PEX that's sold. So hopefully you have a better understanding of what PEX C is and why it's a little bit less popular. If you have any questions, comment in the comment section and as always, subscribe.